welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. The famous four and a half inch angle grinder. Chances are if you've done some grinding and it wasn't on a dance floor, you own or at least have used one of these guys. But how powerful is a, for instance, quote unquote, seven amp corded four and a half inch angle grinder from a name brand like Milwaukee? And if you save a few bucks by shopping at Harbor Freight, will buying an eight amp model then make more power for less money? since eight is in fact higher than seven after all. And more importantly to our channel as we test more and more of these in future episodes is, how do cordless angle grinders compare to corded? These things aren't often rated for power, yet there's a huge price difference between models and brands. So we built a power dyno specifically tailored to measure the power output of these tools to test a couple corded options, then compare those to a couple newer brushless cordless options from Harbor Freight, measuring their umph and full runtime with various batteries, and assessing things like heat and vibration, which as it turns out is a way bigger difference between corded and cordless tools than we assumed. As always, we're just one piece of the puzzle here, a place where you can see the power of these tools measured. I recommend also checking out long-term reviews of these tools as well. This is Milwaukee's latest 6130 model corded four and a half inch angle grinder that we bought because it's the most popular model sold at Home Depot. We paid $84 for it. It's a top locking switch style design and it's about the size of a tool that you would imagine when most people think four and a half inch angle grinder. This particular model is rated for seven amps, which well, does that really tell you how powerful it is? Luckily, some brands advertise max watts out, which is nice, but hard to compare to most other brands who simply do not. And one upping those seven amps with eight is this, the Bauer 64742 eight amp trigger grip style angle grinder. And this happens to be the most popular angle grinder sold at Harbor Freight, who has a lot of these tools, something we're diving into today in our first episode, but let us know other brands and models you wanna see compared as well. But this guy is just 45 bucks, so nearly half the price of the also corded Milwaukee with no obvious reasons as to why. And it's more powerful by the numbers, those numbers again being amps. No other power figure given for the Bauer. Which if you think about it, is sort of a terrible way to rate a tool's capability telling you how many amps go into the tool is a very limited piece of the puzzle here. That's just power consumption when you mix it with wall voltage of 120, about 840 watts for this and 960 for this. It'd be like someone with a sports car explaining how powerful it is by only telling you it's fuel mileage. 12 miles per gallon could be numbers for a 760 horsepower GT500, but also my dad's old 98 Chevy Suburban with a 454 that currently makes about 200 on a good day. Wouldn't only advertising power consumption encourage you to slap a cheaper, less efficient, power hungry, but power output sort of whatever type motor in these? Let's take a look. So we bought one of these amp flow, massively powerful little rare earth magnet DC motors that are used for battle bots. Yeah, seriously, these have a lot of punch. This particular one that's best for our RPM range here being good for 2200 plus watts or three horsepower. So these tools are going to run it to generate those watts until they can't any longer. To do so, we needed a specialized coupler with half inch shaft and keyway on one end and 5 8 angle grinder threads on the other, but the one I made up shook our little angle grinder to death in a matter of seconds. The threads need to be dead on centric with the shaft. So we put out a call and the YouTube channel Westweld answered saying, no problem, I can machine that. And boy, was that true. This thing now made from aluminum for less rotating mass is a precision art piece machined with a keyway and set screw opposing a flat side for mounting our RPM Hall effect sensor magnet. He wouldn't even accept money or a shipping label from us. What a guy. Check out Westweld in the link below for some honestly amazing fabrication and machining videos that are super well put together. Our first stop is RPM under load. Some angle grinders have different free speeds, so this will tell us how much work, spinny spinny grinding action each tool is doing under some load. In this case, 200 watts of load, something every angle grinder should be able to do, and is what we calculated some light to semi-moderate grinding requires based on measuring disc RPM drop while using one of these tools. And the Milwaukee Corded settles in to about 5,700 RPM under this load. Now, is that good? We have no idea yet. We're also seeing a hefty amount of vibration from this thing despite our setup being perfectly true on the motor. Let's see what it can ultimately put out here. For every tool, we're going to dial up the load until it cuts out or drops below 4,000 RPM from that load, whichever happens first. The Milwaukee vibrates away convincingly and it makes up to 300, 
320, 360, 380, 400, 410, 420, and the RPM is dropping steadily now. Can't handle 430, and 420 would bring it under that 4,000 RPM floor anyways. Gotta say, I was expecting more from this tool. In case you are curious, it was drawing 870 to 910 watts from the wall during this for about 7.5 amps. Maybe expected more power output for something corded and less vibration and less heat. This thing got up to 155 degrees near the head just from this run length up to max beans and it smelt pretty toasty for it. Let's see how the much cheaper 8 amp Bauer does. Up first is its speed under load test, basically how much work it's going to be doing for you. The first thing we noticed is the trigger locked makes a couple hundred RPM less than just squeezing the trigger. So if you have this tool and need more power, squeeze it rather than lock it in place. But also, it's faster under load than the Milwaukee, which sounds like, well, whatever. But it's a slower free speed tool, so far living up to what the box is saying. For max power, it was easily able to get up to 300 watts on our first load tester. And on the second one, just kept climbing and climbing. It being a $45 Harbor Freight grinder, we expected a roadblock right about here. At 450, it started to slow down a bit if you watch the RPM here, but ultimately climbed up to 500 watts, 510 caused it to shut down. That's more than the Milwaukee, and I know you're going to be like, well, duh, it's an 8 amp and the Milwaukee's a 7, but A, they could have just been lying, and B, that's just power into the tool which here was 1240 to 1270 watts at the wall for the Bauer. So less efficient than the Milwaukee looking at this for sure, but was also noticeably less vibration. It did get hot, but 140 degrees here, not the 155 of the Milwaukee. So the Bauer over delivered, claimed to be 15% more powerful than the seven amp Milwaukee. And by the numbers, it was 19% more. You can look up the max watts out for the Milwaukee, which shows to be 750 here. The amp flow motor comes with an efficiency scale and it puts our corrected numbers at 656 watts out, not 750. And the Bauer at 781. Plus the Milwaukee, it's a bit of a rattle box and gets way too hot, which many people point out in the reviews. Would not recommend buying this one, even if it was cheaper than the Bauer and it's very much not. Okay, on to cordless and continuing with Bauer, this is Bauer's latest brushless 20 volt angle grinder. 2161CR-B, which comes in at a very affordable $50, or $150 if you then buy a bare 5 amp hour battery and charger, so $150 as tested here. We also have the 1.5 amp hour battery just because we're sort of curious, but it's not going to rank with this. It is a bit bigger as a tool compared to its corded cousin, but surprisingly weighs less with a 5 amp hour battery, just 5 pounds, around half pound lighter than the corded tool. And what's also odd is how noticeably less vibration you get from the cordless tool. Like it doesn't even feel like it's on compared to the corded one. Which we noticed on the dyno here as well as it got up to speed for its under load run. It's just sort of no fuss and the brushless bower actually racks up around 7,470 RPM under that 200 watt load. Super good. That's pretty promising. And it makes it to 300 watts on our first tester, then 360... 380 total, 400, 430, 450, 470, 480, 490, 500, 510, 520, 530, and the RPM starts to skydive here. And it cuts out. Doesn't like the load of 530 watts, dropping it in RPM like that. With another shot, we find pretty much the same results. And in case you're curious, the one and a half amp hour battery did much better than we assumed in 5,980 RPM under load and made it up to 340 watts, 350 would kill it. Not bad. The beauty of cordless tools though is we can runtime test them now. The universal AC DC jiggle box motors and these corded tools would rattle this whole rig into pieces across the long test, but brushless motors are miles ahead in that regard so we can see how long a battery lasts. Which is a big concern on these tools as they are famous under even brands like DeWalt and Milwaukee for not lasting a long time. Maybe 
8, 10, 15 minutes on some models. Not a lot to work with, and their main downside it would appear as these do so far pack some punch. So we're going to keep that 200 watt load on a freshly charged battery until this thing dies, which is a super consistent way to test every cordless single grinder we buy in the future across a standardized runtime test for each tool and battery. Something I see basically nowhere listed online for these types of tools. The Bauer is going to disappoint here though a bit with just 6 minutes and 56 seconds of runtime on a 5 amp hour battery. 7 minutes, that's not great. Decently cheap batteries, but you'd hope to only need maybe 2 or so, and 14 minutes is not going to get you very far. Quite a time constraint on you, but its temperatures were very nice. 114... No, we got... 93 degrees in the head? That's really... That's almost cold. 94... Hotter in the handle, but not by much. I mean, body temperature is higher than that. Yeah, the battery's a good 115 degrees. 115 degrees on the battery. Not bad. So that's a full 40 to 50 degrees cooler at the head than the corded tools. One of the issues with rating these tools in amps is universal motors are terribly inefficient. A lot of that is going to heat, as we experienced heating up your tool with amps is not a great measure of its power. These brushless tools are miles more efficient and are going to be designed around mitigating gear friction and heat in general so that you don't run through batteries even faster than you already do. When you have plentiful power from the wall, eh, it's like who cares. Okay, on to the next brushless angle grinder from Harbor Freight, the Hercules. Like their new impact wrenches and drivers, maybe these are good. And like those, it also carries a five-year warranty standard. This is the HCB61P, and we paid 90 bucks for it. Also pretty reasonable, but more than the Bauer, of course. The good news is that along with the Hercules name, you get some real battery selection, including a standard 5 amp hour, but also their extreme performance battery like this 8 amp hour that uses Samsung 21700 cells, which would make for longer run times and ideally, yeah, more power on tap. We're going to find that out. That does come with it a pricier kit you need to put together though, making a 5 amp hour kit totals 228 and the 8 amp hour 283. This is a paddle switch design, which is what our store had. Same price, but I prefer these sliding switch design if I had to choose. It's a heavier tool, 5 pounds 3 ounces with the 5 amp hour battery, and over 6 pounds, 6 pounds 4 ounces with the 8 amp hour pack. But it does feel balanced and even less vibration than the brushless power. Let's take a look. Starting out with the 5 amp hour pack first, which is very much a viable choice that many people might be running. Here's its RPM under load, and it's seeing 6,320, 6,300. So below the Bauer for sure, but it's also a lower free speed tool, which hopefully means it's made for more peak power. Now we were able to get it up to 300 watts here, no problem. Then 320, up to 390, 400. 420, 440, 450, it's starting to struggle, and up to 460, it's going to make it fall below 4,000 RPM and stumble here. Yeah, that's right, coming in under the Bauer brushless, both using a 5 amp hour pack. The Hercules having these extreme batteries, though, or designed to take advantage of them, maybe, it might be its saving grace. And with that, we're seeing 6,680, 6,660 RPM for the new pack, up on the 5 amp hour battery for sure. Okay, so dialing this one up to 300, then throwing a full 100 over here to this low tester for 400, it's still going strong at 5,700 RPM or so. Let's see what it can do. So it cuts out at 570 watts, while at 560 was still going alright, so 560 it is a huge improvement over the 5 amp hour pack and now above the Bauer for sure. The biggest improvement though we see is runtime. Here's the 5 amp hour on top and 8 amp hour on bottom, both on the graph. The Hercules with the same 5 amp hour capacity as the Bauer makes it up to a full 12 minutes of runtime under that 200 watt medium lowish type grinding task level. 
which is well above the 7 minutes the Bauer made, and the 8 amp hour extreme makes it to 19.5 minutes. Getting 20 minutes out of one of these tools I think is decent. The last cordless I personally used lasted about 8 to 10 minutes on a 5 amp hour, which was kind of annoying. And here's its temps after those 20 minutes. So it looks like 113 at the head, then again 82, 81 on the handle. Only low 70s down here, room temperature. 107, 108 degrees on the battery. So basically a little warmer in the head than the Bauer after more than twice the runtime and cooler at the battery, both around 40 plus degrees cooler than a cord in Milwaukee. Now I've done a lot of talking and thrown a lot of numbers at you though, which can happen in episode one of a new dyno setup, but let's rank these things. Runtime is very important on these tools, so corded options won't be ranked here. We got the Bauer, then the two variations of the Hercules we'd consider running the five amp hour and eight amp hour priced accordingly. They start out with deficits based on their as tested weights here as negative 100 for the five pound tool, then negative 107 and negative 125 for the eight amp hour trim. RPM under load favors the Bauer for whatever reason. That's 74.7, 63, and 66.6. Then a full 520, 460, and 560 points for their watts output. No real power figures on these tools being advertised, so this is sort of the only place you're gonna see it so we feel it's worth some points when ranked here for sure. Based on using math from the curves provided with our BattleBots motor, that equals 1.08 horsepower out for the Bauer, which compares based on our testing close to an 8 amp corded angle grinder that we've bought. Then 0.96 horsepower out for the Hercules, which would be about a 7.5 amp angle grinder, and 1.17 horsepower for the 8 amp hour configuration, which would compare closest to a 9 amp grinder based on our measurements so far. They are awarded for their runtime as seconds divided by 10. That's 42, 72, and 117. This is the amount of work they did during that runtime, which is RPM under load, totaled, which is decent for the Bauer when you look at it per minute, but that makes for 24 points, 34, and 57. When you total all of these factors and compare it to its price as tested though, Bauer does understandably very well. 189.9 points, 114.5 for the 5 amp hour and 119.4 for the 8 amp hour. Still being a better buy per dollar here by our math and I agree with that given its performance difference. That totals 747.6, 635.5, and 796 putting the 8 amp hour Hercules set up in first, Bauer in second, and the 5 amp hour last, which makes some sense. The Bauer is an incredibly good buy for the money, but the battery selection performance runtime of this puts it a bit ahead. The scoring here does very much allow for a kit that costs maybe $450, $500, even $600 to place well if they can increase power or efficiency or way less. So dress cordless tools you want to see us buy next, or even corded ones you want to see thrown into the mix here early on before we fill up our ranking. For entry level pricing, it's hard to not like the Bauer, especially since it brings 8 amp corded type power and less vibration than a corded model. We'll have to see how it holds up in the long term. And the Hercules, man, would not have guessed that a 5 amp hour battery would make it not worth it, and the 8 amp hour, it totally is. Hard to know with those things without really dynoing them. Click subscribe to join us for future testing. We make episodes at least every Friday. Thanks for watching.